Hi there and welcome. We're going to do a really in-depth study today of the deltoid. Here on this front view is this section right here, okay? This is the outline of the deltoid on the front section. And then here we've got the deltoid in this spot. On the other side, we can see it lined up here. So we're just seeing a little part of it there. I think of it um, as something that is weaving the body and the arm together. So, you know, really it literally is, uh, but visually that's something that's really important about it too. So I want you to just imagine for a minute that there's a humerus on here, right? So the top of the humerus would be something like this. And there we go. <laughs> Good enough for government work, I guess, right? Okay, so let's talk about the origin and insertion. We have got an origin point of the underneath of the clavicle here, okay? So both sides underneath of the clavicle. When we get around to the back, it's actually going to follow along the scapula. And then our insertion point is about halfway down the humerus on the outside of the arm. So if um, the figure is facing the front, which it is, we wanna look toward the outside. But sometimes that humerus gets rotated forwards and backwards, so it may change a little bit. But from that neutral front position, it's about halfway down on the outside. So then we'll get the bulk or the form of the deltoid kind of going like this. So from a lot of angles, actually, it represents kind of like a teardrop shape. All right. So sometimes those edges might be a little different. You might have more definition, less definition, but definitely there is overall kind of a you know, if you think of a teardrop shape like this or kind of a triangle, but that has been rounded off, that's the kind of shape that we have there for the deltoid. So let's look a little bit more in depth at what is happening there on the clavicle. When I'm looking at this clavicle, all right, this is going to be the outside of the body. This is going to be the center of the body, okay? And then right in here is where you have the deltoid attaching on the underneath of that clavicle. When we go around to the scapula, we have got the underneath of this part, the spine of the scapula right here. This is the part that kind of sticks out. So that whole underneath in this section is where the back of the deltoid attaches. These pictures can look a little confusing sometimes, especially right here. They're kind of dissecting it a little bit so that you can see what's happening. But we've got right here, okay, there's this tendon there, if you can see that. There's just a little bit of connective tissue. And that is holding together the clavicle on the front of the body and attaching it to the scapula on the back of the body. So this section, well, sorry, I messed up right here. This section is that clavicle, right, you know, at the base of the neck on the front of the body. And then this section is the scapula, all right? And both of those help to form the little socket where the humerus inserts, okay? So those are connecting, and basically the front underneath here on the clavicle is where the deltoid's attaching, and then it wraps around the underneath back here. So you're going to see later when people have their arm raised overhead, we start to see this U or V shape here where the scapula and the clavicle are coming together. And if you were looking at someone from above, you're also going to see this kind of U shape and then the deltoid 
going and attaching down onto the humerus, something like that. So here's another image, which has basically the same thing going on there. Here's the clavicle on the bones, and then here is the clavicle, and for some reason going that way, on the muscle chart. And then we've got the scapula here, and there's that spine of the scapula right there, okay? And then here's our deltoid. In this illustration, that humerus, you know, the socket is underneath here and the rest of the bone is going that direction. They've just lifted the arm up there. So now that we have a little bit of an overview of what's going on with the deltoid, we're going to draw this over the top of a skeleton. I have one already printed out. I recommend that you do the same or do this digitally on an iPad. But if you don't have a way to get a print out of a skeleton, you might just try and draw your own. I know this can sound really overwhelming, but just keep things simplified. If you're drawing the ribs, for example, you don't necessarily need to draw every individual rib, but just have the overall egg shape of the rib cage. Now I know this looks a little out of focus, but it's actually because I have a piece of Duralar, this Duralar matte film over the top of my printout. I like this because then if I'm trying to get a muscle that's an underneath layer, I can use a separate sheet and I'm not just having to draw right on top of the image. I'm choosing to use some colored pencils today. That way I can get something that really looks like a muscle with the shading. I can't remember if white shows up very much on the Duralar, um, but I've got it anyway, just in case. So let's go ahead and begin with the origin and insertion points. And I'm going to start right here on the front. So we've got just a little bit of this underneath of the clavicle before it starts to wrap around to the back. So there is our beginning point. And the insertion point is the outside of the humerus about halfway down. So there's already a little bit of an outline on this particular chart, so it's pretty easy to follow here. Okay, and we get something like that. Now, generally where things are connecting, there's a little bit of connective tissue, um, some kind of a tendon or a ligament. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space and then I'm gonna put in a little bit of shading at each end going in the direction of the muscle fibers. And this'll give just a little bit of form. So down here at the insertion point, the fibers kind of radiate out because it's kind of this wider origin going into a very narrow ins insertion point. I'm going to get some red in there and I might give it a little, a little bit of shading at the end as well. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna fill in a little bit of white up here. Sometimes later when I put it over a gray piece of paper, it looks kind of cool. And um, I'm just gonna drag like a few more of these fibers out here. Just give a little bit more sense of realism there. Okay. Repetition really helps with learning. So let's go ahead and do it again over here. We've got the underneath of that clavicle insertion point way on the outside this time. Let's go on to the side view here. We are seeing a bit of that scapula back there and remember the deltoid is attaching right to the outside. So now I'm going to outline the underneath of the spine of the scapula. And it's hard to really see what's going on with the clavicle up there. So I'm just gonna kind of hint at it and um, leave it at that for now. 
and then our insertion point about halfway down the arm. And so now I'm putting it in the center of the humerus since, um, you know, that arm is facing toward us now. So now let's go ahead and get the back view. Got the underneath of the scapula here. I'll do both at the same time. Underneath of the scapula. And I'm not drawing it around to the clavicle, um, just because I feel like it would be weird to kind of look through there at it. Outside of the humerus insertion point. And then here, it's even going to be a little bit more wrapped around the front. So if you can see, this thumb is pointing outwards, this thumb is pointing forwards. So this one, you know, might feel a little bit toward us. And then this insertion point might even be just a little bit around the front because of that rotation. Okay. And one final thing that I'm going to mention about the deltoid, which I don't think is super incredibly important when it comes to drawing the deltoid, but that is that there are three different sections in the deltoid. So there's kind of like a smaller one in the front, the big central point, and then a smaller section in the back as well. You can see this a little bit with the way that it fans out, you know, there'll be kind of like a, a division with the way that it's attaching here. Um, and also you're going to see sometimes, not always, a little bit of a division at the top. You don't see a lot necessarily of division through kind of the belly of the muscle. Maybe if somebody is very, you know, very defined. But for the most part, that's where you will see the division sometimes. And when we get to the section where we're looking at the models, you're especially going to see this when somebody has raised the arm up and it's and that deltoid is really engaged and contracting. Then you'll start to see the sections more clearly with that arm up. So be on the lookout and be ready to notice that uh, when we're looking at the models in a little bit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to get some paper just to sketch on. And we're going to talk about the deltoid as a symbolic shape and what you really want to think about when you're drawing the figure and you're considering the deltoid. This video features highlights from a full drawing lesson, which can be found on patreon.com slash school of realist art. There you will find extended lessons, multiple examples, reference photos, and other tutorials. Check out patreon.com slash school of real estate.